Nico! My juices are flowing. Things are happening. Nita! Shooting a documentary on me, baby. What, what's the documentary? What are you talking about? I'm going to play Madison Square Garden in 18 months, you hear me? And I'm going to play that big place in Paris. What's that, Palladium? I'm going there. 18 months. I am going to play them places. How I'm going to play them, I have no idea. Because I have no idea how I got off crack. I have no idea how I brought myself out the gutter. Now, I want you to use your sticks. Mm -hmm. Click. I see what I like, and I like what I see, and I want what I like, I want what I see, and I get what I want. I want what I see, get what I want, yeah. Ready? Okay. The first time I heard of Andre Williams was on a compilation record called Born Bad. I mean, he's like a Chuck Berry, you know, same type of thing. He doesn't he just, whenever he uses a band, the band practices, he comes in and, you know, wing it. <laughs> he's like the godfather and like, you know, all these other bands and they're like his hitmen throughout the country because you got, you know, the Countdowns and the Blues Explosion and Cheater Slicks. They're all from different cities in the United States, like hitmen, you know. So, I'm not satisfied with it, but I'm content. It's out there. I can't go back and change it. So, that's my thought about that. I didn't think it was a very good choice of, 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 of uh, titles to use, but everybody else seemed to match that with my attitude. So, if that's the way they see me, so be it. And if you wrote the check out and it's got the right numbers, I'll be the black godfather. I'll be the dirty old bitch if you want me to, if you got the right money. Because in the end, the whole thing ain't nothing but a dream in the first place. Give it to me. Give it to me, mama. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. I'm going crazy.
Now, I'm on the beach and I can't hear you very well, but you tell Aaron and Jeff that when I get back from California, I'm putting together a war chest. And I'm a war chest, and I'm going to get a trial lawyer. I'm tired of waiting on this garbage. You know he's there, and I know he's there. And this don't make sense. I know they go during the day, but you, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is my quarter. You said, let me go check. There ain't got but two rooms in that whole joint. Don't play me like that. Is Aaron there? Aaron's not there either. All right, I'm gonna call one more time, and then I'm, I'm getting a trial lawyer. All right. Andre? Yeah. Are you having some problems? Oh, same old bullshit. What kind of bullshit? That's the money from Fat Boy Slim that they owe me. They done spent the money. They trying to put it together. They done got the check. Well, what about Fat Boy Slim? He used a sample of your music? Or? Yeah, humping, bumping, and thumping. They got the money, and they just playing me off. And they never paid you for uh, using never. that sample? Never. Not a dime. And they told me the money was on its way from the United Kingdom. But how long do it take? Two years to come from the United Kingdom? Get out of here. Whip it, mama. Watch me. Whip it, baby. Jim, what do we do now? Um, Fuck them other songs, cause we'll knock them bitches off in five minutes. Yeah. What do you want? Cause y'all can work those songs out and I'll just do them. Cause I'm about ready to go. This is the last yeah. time we're all gonna be together before we play a show. Well, tomorrow. don't worry about that. Oh, I ain't worried. I ain't worried. Yeah, if you ain't worried, I ain't worried. Let me tell you something. Brian will tell you. Trust me, fellas. Just give me the opening numbers. And I will not disappoint you. I went to Detroit, and I seen this marquee that said amateur show tonight. Winner, $25 for the winner. So I went in that theater, and the amateur show started around midnight. I went in there about 4 o'clock that afternoon. I sit through about two movies figuring out what the hell was I going to do to get this $25. I knew I was going to get it, but I had to figure out how. So I came up with this song, Hi Yo Silver. I'll never forget it. I wrote it right there in the theater. And it wasn't but about four lines. And after the four lines, I just danced my butt off. So I won that night. Well, if you win one night, you get a chance to come back the next amateur show and then as you win you just keep coming back keep coming back keep coming back so I won about eight weeks straight you know and Miss Wallfield the name of the theater was the Wallfield theater it was on Hastings she got in touch with Miss Brown because I was started to pulling in the crowds you know the people would start really coming so Miss Brown came in and seen the last show and offered me a contract for fortune yeah and that's how that began. What were you supposed to do there? I was a singer, supposedly. But at that time, the singers that was really selling records were your tenor singers, like Clyde McFadder and that could sing tenor. Well, I'm a baritone. So, you know, I'm, I was selling a few records territorially. But I knew that I had to hurry up and get a gimmick, or that was going to soon fizzle out.
we'd have a happy hour, it was always, okay, Zephyr, come on up. And some kind of way, I'd come up with some kind of formula, and it worked. You were named Zephyr at that time? Uh, not Zephyr at this time, but I chose Andre because I didn't like the way people would call me Zaffi. And it sounded like Sambo. A few people know me as Zephyr. My family know me as Zephyr. You know, uh, when you when you deal with Zephyr, you're dealing with an automatically different character. Um, Zephyr is the quiet guy. You know, Zephyr is the heavy thinker. Andre is the loose goose. It's about time that we start screwing our women. You know, if you don't screw them, the squirrel's going to screw them, or the rabbits, somebody's going to screw them. Get the pussy, baby. What 
was it like working in Motown, okay? It was the greatest experience of my life. I was regarded as the guy that could make it happen. You know, they didn't respect me, and I didn't respect them, truthfully. But I got the job done. Whenever Barry wanted something done, I got it done. Until he got on my nerve, then I told him to kiss my ass. I had cut Stevie Wonder's first record. Now, if you think it's a lie, ask him. His first record was Dear Mother. That's when he was a little bitty brat. He was tinkering. You know what the word tinkering is? He was messing around with everything. He'd knock the drums out of pocket, the piano out of tune, because he'd be in there banging, and they would say, get him out the studio. But we fought for him. Finally, he started developing. By that time, I was gone, and I haven't seen him since. Are, are you proud of him? I'm more than proud of him, because he represented Andre Williams with a, with a diplomatic attitude. I am Andre Williams with a, with an aggressive attitude. <laughs> I didn't stay there, but maybe five or six months at one period, because I got frustrated with the bullshit. Then I'd leave to go get a hit. Then Barry would send for me to come back, and I'd go back like a damn fool. Stay there five or six months, leave again. Everybody was recording. You didn't never know when your records was coming out. What did you do after leaving Motown? Well, I went and wrote Shake a Tail Feather for wonderful records. That's your biggest hit? Well, now. twine time. No, I've had hits, hits, hits. Oh, Love it. I'm <laughs> when I'm sober, like when y'all see me this morning, that was Zephyr. But after I got me a little hit, then I moved into Andre. I don't particularly like Zephyr, you know, myself. Well, because number one, he's no fun. Andre is fun. I don't, I've never had a girlfriend to call me Zephyr. You know what I mean? Zephyr is too serious. Zephyr take issues to too many things. And he let too many things stress him out. Well, Andre will take it and let it roll off his back and move on to the next stage. You see, they bounce off of each other. You know what I mean? When Andre get in trouble, then Zephyr comes in and save him. When Zephyr get in trouble, Andre takes the pain away. Makes sense? Not really, but it makes sense to me. Baby. Let me put it in.
baby. Let me put it in. If you, if you, if you let me put it in, I'll buy you a car. Baby. If you just let me, if you just let me slide in. fall in love with my product. I'm commercial. I don't really like what I'm doing because it's so blowed up and full of shit. In what way? Well, because that's what the people buy, sex. Uh, undercover bullshit. You know, our human race now is built on don't tell nobody I done it. You know, so uh, I write them, I forget them. Like, sometimes it takes three hours for a song to come back to me to get my recall because there's so many of them. Not that it's an ego trip. It's been so many. I think I'm over 700 now. And where did they come from? Andre. Yeah, but you pick them out of the sky? No, you can't pick no songs out. You pick it out of the shit you go through, out of the games people play. Baby. 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 addicted to drugs. Then I went to work for Ike Turner and got super addicted. What did you do except for using drugs? It was two studios and I was in charge of renting out Studio B. And then I was in charge of um, helping him master and mix his stuff 
uh, when he was out of town, and he was out of town every weekend, so I would be there by myself and putting together the stuff that he had recorded, then I would, you know, edit it and put it together. Uh, and then he would come in and critique it, and that would be it. What was that like at Ike's place? Misery. Every day. And why did you stay? The drugs was good. That's the only reason. Just to show you that I'm still drinking, I'm going to order one. You want to give me a double one of those um, Bacardi Darties? I left Ike because I went there weighing 160 pounds and I left there weighing 98. I was almost dead. I was hemorrhaging. I was using my shirt tail to catch the blood on the airplane to get back to Yvonne uh, to save my life. I was at the second floor of the gutter. Right. My father, he, he showed me how to survive in the streets. He showed me what the value of common sense was. And uh, my, uh -huh. my mom showed me, you know, the value of a good Christian background. Y'all want to go upstairs and meet my wife? Okay. Both of my boys went to college, and I didn't have a job. Both of my boys went on scholarships. Both of my boys have never seen the inside of a jail. I mean, that to me gave me the inspiration to know, Andre, you got to give them something back. Now I got a granddaughter, a grandson, five CDs, my itinerary got me booked up till next June. What more can a 65-year-old black man ask for? This is Andre, so y'all are ignorant. Is air in there. Okay, I have a film crew here, and we're doing a documentary. I'm finna dog you motherfuckers out. Well, because you don't have my motherfucking money, you're a bunch of shyster motherfuckers, and I know that bitch is there, and I want my motherfucking money. You understand? Friday! You know what? You know what's gonna happen Friday? I'm going to the Godfather. All you bitches is better get out of that building, because I'm going to the Godfather. Y'all have fucked me around long enough. You understand? And you tell that big fat bitch up in that front room, he better have my motherfucking money. I'm tired of sucking y'all dicks. You understand me? Do you hear me? All right, tell that bitch he better talk to me Friday. I gotta pay bills like y'all are living in heaven and I'm living in hell.
pretty child. I want to be your favorite family jammer. I want to be your jamming man. I want to be your favorite dog, baby. You can keep me on the back. Your favorite lipstick Shine on your juicy lips I'll be your favorite person around Hug around your pretty head I'll be your favorite high drive Hug around your pretty thighs I'll be your favorite person around Hug around your pretty thighs I want to be your favorite Patrick Cameron. I want to be Jamie Day. I want to be your favorite dog. You can keep me like this. This is Yvonne. This is, um, this is Yvonne. This is 30 something years of putting up with my bullshit. What was that like, Yvonne? Rough. <laughs> why? Rough, rough, rough. Say why? Say why was rough? Oh, you just... Come on, Vaughn, talk I to mean, him. I mean, you know, sometimes it was okay, but then again, he was just wild, you know what I'm saying? Just... Talk to him, man. And well, it, it would take. <laughs> Talk to him, man. Uh, you know what my wife think about that? It's just not my life. It's just what he wants to do. He always had a dream of, you know, singing. He's been singing all his life. When I married him, that's what he was doing, you know. So I'm not gonna keep him from doing what he wanted to do. But at first, when we first got married, you know, you was the prettiest thing that I ever seen in my life. It will bother me, you know, when he was traveling and going on. I was traveling around with him. And then, you know, I got tired of that. A lot of people tell me, I don't see why you would stay with him. But, see, I believe in what the Bible says, when you marry a person, you understand? Know like, we're supposed to stay together regardless to the bad times and the good times. The only thing I try to tell him to do is know what he's doing and then another thing, stop drinking, you know. <laughs> I'm not. I am not. You know, know what you're doing at all times, you know, just hey, don't. Hey, hey, fellas. Because if you are drinking. I'll stop using drugs, I but know. I'm not going to stop drinking. You know why? Well, I'm 64 years old now. I mean, why would I make a change now? I mean, why would I, why would I even think about changing either one of them now? be different if I was 30, 35 years old and I could make some adjustments that would be profitable to me, you know. But now, I mean, my path is laid. I'm out there in the middle of the ocean. I can't turn around now. I'm past the point of no return. You know, I can't go back now. Nothing that I've done, even the wrong things that I've done, if they become uncovered, it would be too late for me to do anything about it.
I'm not real good with melodies. I'm real good with novels, novelties, stories, things that I've seen, things that I've done, and take them and put them in parables, and then put it to music. How does it feel like to go on stage? It feels like doing something that you can do handcuffed and blindfolded. It's the easiest part of the day. You know, it's very easy for me to go up there for two hours. Very easy. No, no, no uh, hassle. You know, as soon as that music hits, I'm on automatic pilot. It feels great. I get to Europe, I'll never come back here to the United States, ever. I don't like nothing about the United States. I don't like nothing about the United States. Let me say it again. I am not, and I was born in Alabama, but I'm going to Austria, and I'm going to live there till I die. And I'm old enough to say it. Now, if you don't like it, kiss my ass. What else?